Hi, so my battery just suddenly died on me, so part two of the video. Um, so to recap, um, Gurbani Mojarid um, says that every year of education completed increases the expected amount of short-sightedness. And the really interesting thing about that is that is quantifiable. Um, so she doesn't mention exact diopters, but there is an expected amount there for every year of education. Um, so um, they so Gurbani Mujarid and his colleagues. Oh. Uh, I am very sorry, I refer to him as her. I do apologise for that. I obviously didn't read this correctly. Um, so, Gurbani Majarid and his colleagues, what they did was they studied the, the effect of education um, by measuring school years on my, myopia. And they they looked in particular at the impact of the UK's raging of, um, raising of the school leaving age uh, from 15 to 16. That was in the 1970s that happened. Um, and they say there's literally a bump in the chart for the extra year of school. Um, and now the, the leaving age has gone up again. It's gone up to 18. Um, that's, that's in the UK. So they're expecting really to find the same thing again with, with the extra years. Um, so we'll go down a bit now. Um, so in in Singapore, they've actually been researching this for quite a long time. Um, it looks like because you know in in um, let's see. So people came to Singapore from rural areas. Um, there was a big push for education. And that's... Um, and obviously people took education very, very seriously. Um, so probably more hours in front of the books. Um, you know, because they wanted their, their children to get the best education, to get good jobs, have good lives, um, etc. So, yes, they, you know, they did get good lives and good education and good jobs. Um, but you've also got whole generations wearing glasses now because of this uh, lifestyle. Um, so... Now, what they've tried in China is um, they've they've used brighter lighting um, to resemble a glass house. They they say, um, but they say that is actually quite expensive because very bright lights. Um, obviously need to be cooled down because they're going to get hot. Um, if, you know, if you've ever had a halogen lamp, um, or so sometimes you can sit under lights and you you know they're hot. Um, but, yeah, really, really good lighting indoors could actually help, I think. Um, mm -mm. Let's see what else. Mm. So, 
in low and middle income countries um, what they're, what they're saying is those countries have about 20 to 30 percent of myopia in adults. Um, I mean that that still sounds like quite a bit and that that still might be due to lifestyle um, if because even in rural areas, you do have people um, doing close work like uh, sewing, um, you know, any anyone doing needlework. Um, certain types of crafts are, are going to be um, close visual, close visual um, tasks. So I, I can see that there would still be some occupations that would increase your chances of of myopia. I don't know if that's how much it would be across everywhere. Um, you know, if no one ever read a book or looked at a computer, I don't know how much there would be I, either way. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Now, yeah, th this is interesting because they, they're saying also when children are educated, they're in school or they're, they're indoors. They're spending a lot of time indoors. And I mean, school and education, I mean, it's certainly changed over the years. Um, I mean, reading went from being desirable um, to kind of being I I feel a bit too compulsory because there was a drive certainly in the UK for children to read a lot so I can't remember how much was it a, a thousand words a day for quite young children I, I don't remember the figures, but I remember thinking at the time, oh, that, that's a lot. There was a big push for children to really have their heads, you know, their heads down in books for long periods of time. And, you know, I'm someone who thinks it's really, really important to get children reading as soon as possible. Um, I mean, I thought this was a bit too much. Um, so I, I think there's a push for a bit too much reading sometimes. Um, also, the the emphasis is much more on um, the the three R's: reading, writing, arithmetic, time in front of screens, um, th things like P and music really are getting pushed to the sidelines in favour of the core curriculum so there's a lot more of one activity going on in schools uh, these days um, so there's also this this other side of it that it's indoor time rather than outdoor time so poor poor poorer lighting um, now they mentioned that the covid um, lockdowns and this is quite interesting because again they've got something quantifiable um, staying indoors appears to be um, now I don't agree with the way they've worded this school time in itself however is not necessarily the, is not necessarily the root of the problem as the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns have shown, it is staying indoors, it appears to be. Um, now, I, I don't agree with this because, again, I think this is kind of pushing. Reading is no problem. Screen time is no problem. Um, phone time is no problem. Um, no, I, I, I disagree with that. I think... 
these close activities definitely are a problem. But I also think indoor time, th there is something in that too. Um, and it said during the lockdown, school shut down um, everywhere. So children didn't go to school. But children's eye health became even worse. Um, now that's, that's interesting. So typically they stayed inside during the lockdowns uh -huh. and spent hours staring at screens either following classes or watching TV. So it wasn't that they were indoors necessarily, it's what they were doing whilst they were indoors. Um, so if they hadn't had televisions um, and maybe not so much reading time but had still spent time indoors, would they still be short-sighted? Um, that's kind of interesting to think about. I mean, it, it is possible, um, you know, if if they were indoors and could never look outside, maybe, but I, I don't know. I, I think the reliance on the screen and text has probably had something to do with it. Um, because in, in school, you're not glued to a screen. You're actually not glued to a book because you go to your class, you sit down, uh, the teacher talks to you for a bit, uh, makes you answer questions, then you have to write stuff down or, I don't know, then you have to type stuff down on your computer. I actually don't know um, what, what it's like inside a classroom these days. Um, well, no, t tell a lie. I, I work in a school and the, the students use a mix of traditional books and um, notebooks and screens, so it, it's a bit of both. So, can you prevent short-sightedness in children? Now, it's interesting. Right, it's what what they are driving at here in this little bit is too much time spent indoors, whereas time spent outdoors in natural light is thought um, to benefit eye health. So it says is thought to benefit eye health. And it may be, you know, what you're doing when you're outdoors, you're, you're just taking more exercise a lot of the time you're more mobile, you're using your distance vision more. Um, and I think natural light may well have a role to play in this. I'm, I'm certainly not dismissing it. Um, but they do seem to be driving at one thing rather than the other. And I think it's actually a combination of both. Um, So, yeah, I mean, in China, they're really, really worried about it, especially um, children between four and six. Um, and China has had quite a lot of lockdowns. Um, so that they're worried because of um, the, the lockdowns that, again, the myopia rates have gone up in that group. Um, so they're waiting for the data to find out. Oh, and it says in the next sentence that um, actually, yes, the lockdowns um, did negatively affect um, young children's eye health. Um, So before the pandemic, the highest rate amongst 
six-year-old children, um, the highest myopia rate was 5.7%. Now, after five months of lockdown, what they found was those children's eyesight, um, that rate was now 21.5%. So going from 5.7% to 21.5% over five months, that is really quite significant. Um, oh, there's even a name for it, quarantine myopia. Um, okay, what else have we got? Oh, sorry, mm, been a long day. Mm. Yeah, okay, so in China, they've actually um, tried to combat this by um, developing strategies and interventions to stop short-sightedness getting worse and what they found was that um, eye exercises are pointless they, they don't work um, now China has limited it has limited children's video gaming. I think that is really good. Um, but they they haven't really been able to, me to measure that. Um, because, like they say, there's so many different types of screens and so many variables. So you can't get accurate data um, on that. Um... Singapore um, has tried using special lenses or glasses, um, also oral supplements, eye exercises, eye relax machines. That sounds a bit painful actually. Um, acupressure, magnetic therapy. Um, has found that none of those actually help, but they find that eye drops help. And I can imagine if you put an eye drop in, it, it kind of disrupts the constant looking at things. You have to blink. Um, so it probably just provides a, a break in the, in the routine or in the... Uh, It probably relaxes your muscles just a bit to, to kind of break the habit, I think. Um, mm, there's a new red light therapy. Um, and it... I th I, I'm assuming that might be infrared. I don't know, but you shine a red light into the eye. And that has slowed down the development. Um, so they don't really know why, but it does um, it does help. Um, so yeah, that is so what uh, uh, uh... Okay, now they go on to other strategies to, is it prevent or manage, to manage or prevent. Um, so what they are finding actually, that glasses 
can be an intervention for children, a, a very successful intervention. Um, so let's It doesn't say what type of glasses, so Otis, if you're watching this, because you've talked about plus prevention quite a lot, and it doesn't say they are plus glasses, so I'm kind of interested here. Um, but it, it does say that they, they study 20,000 children, so that is a big sample study in Guangdong, Guangdong China. Um, they gave them all glasses and it outstripped the impact of parental education or family income. Okay, so it was to see if glasses would improve educational outcomes. Oh, right, okay, so they're saying the intervention um, to help prevent short-sightedness or myopia um, is actually to do with being outdoors, uh, outdoors in natural light. So... Um, Yep. I, yeah. So I, yeah, I think the, uh, the glasses was probably to help with children's education rather than their eye health. So I don't, I don't know what glasses they were whether they were just the normal ones you get an optician or whether it was actually some plus prevention um, program. I'm thinking not now and I'm thinking they're talking about making sure you get enough natural light. And I mean, I would agree with that actually. Um, but I would say not on its own. You do need to find a way to cut down on the screen time, to cut down on the reading um, and maybe find ways of making your focus um, a, bit, a bit more comfortable. So that would be the plus prevention that Otis uh, talks about. But yeah, that is the article. It's on the BBC News um, website it's on it's on the home page and you scroll right down practically to the end of the home page and it's there it's a really really interesting read um, so yeah I hope that was uh, useful so please like and subscribe and hope to see you in my next video